$32.8 million, is what Dave Calhoun is currently paid as CEO of Boeing. More importantly, it was up 45% over last year and up from $22.6 million in 2022. Meanwhile, 32,000 Boeing employees in the Pacific Northwest just got 1% wage increases over eight years. Yeah, the workers got 1% in eight years and the CEO got 45% in one year. And see what was created during his era a destructive weapon, namely Starliner, and its direct victims, NASA astronauts, are being held on the ISS. Can Starliner bring them home? While NASA officials have sought to cool the tension down, NASA astronauts just declared this about Boeing Starliner big trouble. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. The Starliner's glitches, including helium leaks and thrusters, abruptly stopped working leaving NASA astronauts Suni Williams and Butch Wilmore stranded on the ISS for two more weeks than its original plan, turning their mission from one week to three weeks. The station is a cramped space, and ironically, they have been stuck there since June 6. The given reason is to allow engineers on the ground to scramble to learn more about issues that plagued the first leg of their journey. NASA officials are still confident that there is no reason to believe Starliner won't be able to bring the astronauts back home, though. So far, we don't see any scenario where um, Starliner is not going to be able to bring Butch and Sonny home. We really want to work through the remainder of the data. Retired NASA astronaut Leroy Chow shares the same idea about Starliner's re-entry capability. In an interview with CNN on June 20th, he said that the problems on this vehicle are not extremely serious. Helium leaks, thruster failures, uh, you know, these are kind of medium to light problems because it doesn't really threaten the mission at this point. It's As he said, the helium leaks are pretty small, and NASA announced that they can handle tolerate about 100 times what's currently leaking. Four out of five failed thrusters are solved, and one remains disabled. With such positive signs, they should not keep Starliner coming home safely. NASA and Boeing just being extra conservative, don't want to be complacent, want to go through everything. And so just being a little bit extra cautious, that's why the mission is being extended. However, he also emphasized that NASA's typical culture always looks for contingency plans. And in the very worst case, if Starliner cannot come back. Well, of course, Butch and Sunny can save haven at the ISS for, you know, well, basically a number of months at least. And so uh, that would be time to get a replacement spacecraft up, probably a, a SpaceX Dragon spacecraft. Then NASA would have to rejumble the uh, traffic model, but certainly a, a SpaceX uh, Dragon could be brought up to bring Butch and Sonny homes. Similarly, Michael Lembeck, an aerospace engineering associate professor of practice at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, who was a consultant for Boeing's spaceflight division from 2009 to 2014, once shared, the embarrassing backup is that a crew dragon would have to go and retrieve the astronauts. Lembeck said, the spacecraft could be sent up with two crew members and sent back with four, and that would probably be the way home. And as Leroy said, a rescue mission is just used in the worst case, because the problems Starliner is experiencing are relatively minor. So I fully expect that on the 26th, per the plan, current plan, uh, Butch and Sonny will make it back safely in the Starliner. So how about you? Do you believe in Starliner's re-entry capability? Say yes if you agree. Anyway, if you find this useful, please give us a share, like, and subscribe. Your support will be a huge motivation for us to release more quality videos in the future. And now, let's come back. Another example given in the interview to strengthen the fragile belief in Starliner is the case of the Voyager 1 spacecraft launched in 1977 being the most distant human-made spacecraft ever launched far beyond the orbit of Pluto, Voyager is the riding point for all humanity as it hurtles through interstellar space. The spacecraft met trouble last November when it stopped sending any data back to Earth, beginning the greatest crisis in the history of the fabled Voyager program. Due to the obstacles in understanding its root cause, NASA scientists nearly wanted to sideline it. However, after tireless five-month working to save the spacecraft, the Voyager 1 probe finally phoned home in April. Boeing and NASA may have been holding out hope for a miracle on Starliner like Voyager 1. But unlike Voyager 1, Starliner is essentially a manned mission, so the tension will be exponential. 
the long-term delay in bringing the vehicle back home has left the astronauts stuck in an ironic situation, and the Starliner team grappling with the unplanned side of the mission. To be honest, the Boeing CFT astronauts are also somewhat aware of the risks that await them before launch. I was fine stuff, and we are going to continue continually find stuff. Everything's not going to be absolutely perfect as we fly the spacecraft. We feel very safe and comfortable where, how the spacecraft flies, and we have back-out procedures in case we need those. Wilmore also had a famous quote for the media in March 2024. The expectation from the media should not be perfection, he said. This is a test flight. Flying and operating in space is hard. It's really hard, and we're going to find some stuff. That's expected. It's the first flight where we are integrating the full capabilities of this spacecraft. You don't get visibility in those programs in those flights, he said. So don't have that expectation, please. It's not going to be perfect, but it's not going to be bad either. We wouldn't go if we thought that. It's going to be things that are rectifiable, and the whole thing is to get up, get to the space station, and get back, and we're going to show that it has that capability. I don't know how you feel, but my hunch is it seems like they are trying to pretend that everything is fine. Let's look at how happy they were after opening the hatch and entering the ISS. I think anyone in their situation would act the same way. See how Boeing whistleblowers ended their lives. All of them were retaliated, verbal harassment and threats, and even physical violence. The recent hearing has shown them all. Talking about the extended time on ISS, NASA also doesn't rule out the possibility of Starliners spending up to 45 days at the orbiting laboratory if needed. It's not uncommon for astronauts to unexpectedly extend their stay aboard the space station for days, weeks, or even months. But the situation will further tarnish Boeing's reputation, which has already been notorious for a long list of blunders by the Starliner program. I think Dave Calhoun was recently too tired given tough questions on Capitol Hill regarding the Boeing plane crash. Chances are he also does not want to come back there again to explain the Starliner mishaps on ISS. Besides that, making Starliner operational as soon as possible is also NASA's demand to keep up with its upcoming plans. Dependence on a single supplier like SpaceX, regardless of crew or cargo mission, would somehow worry the agency. So if something does transpire with Dragon, something serious that grounds the ship for a while, we are essentially going to return the time before SpaceX Dragon comes online. A November 2019 report by NASA's Office of Inspector General found that, since 2017, when NASA targeted commercial crew flights to start, the agency spent about $1 billion on 12 additional Soyuz seats to ensure continued access to the station, while both Boeing, Starliner, and SpaceX Dragon encountered delays. Anyway, we believe that SpaceX will never let its Dragon spacecraft hit any trouble in this context, given that Starliner is too weak to ferry astronauts, and Sierra Space's Dream Chaser has not launched any time. NASA also does not want to order any products from Russia, especially in the current sensitive political context. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.